Team Dash, what's happening? What's going on with you? Chilling, man. Just kicking it. Man, it's a pleasure. It's an honor to have you mm -hmm. in here right now. Talk to the people, man. What's, what you got working? I mean, you know, I'm always doing things that inspire me. But uh, my man Jay Black, a.k.a. Black Gold, you know, he told me there's a lot of opportunity out here. And he had things laid out. And he has some talent. And he still does. And we opened up a gallery. And, you know, he became the president of Blue Rock. So this movement is in uh, full effect. But also I'm launching my liquors. And I'm also launching my movies. And uh, I'm also learning how to farm. And just kind of just chill out and love life, you know. Now let's talk about Blue Rock right quick. Where you mm -hmm. got the name from, the concept, and what does it actually mean? Well, you know, blue is my favorite color. And um, I always have something paused with the rock in it, some way, shape, or form. And uh, I've always called my music division, when it became my music division, completely, you know, Blue Rock, my favorite color, plus, you know, the word that means solid to me. You know what I'm saying? So that just represents my music division. Now, what's the standout for the word rock? We heard it in Rockefeller. We hear it in now in Blue Rock. What is special about the word rock, and what does that mean to you? Just the strength in it, you know. We're just the rock, you know, and it's, it's, any, it's any kind of rock we wanted to be. Pause, you know what I'm saying? Just always solid. So, you know, I've always run with, ran with that um, on some way, shape, or form as it relates to the music. Plus, it's my brand, you know what I mean? My brand. Now, for the people who necessarily do not know who Dame Dash is, please tell everybody who Dame Dash is. Well, I usually don't tell people who I am. They got to hear about me. So, you know, again, even on my, my Instagram, I don't even have my name. is Dame Dash or Damon Dash. And whoever's using that Twitter is lying to y'all. I'm Dusko Poppington. So I'm more of a destination. I do so much. I'm just an independent businessman that won't compromise. And I just like to make history every second, you know. But more or less on my terms, I like to share with my family and my friends. I believe in honor. And, you know, my work reflects that. And my demeanor reflects that. And, you know... The, the 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 amount of time I've been around doing what I'm doing, which is completely always, comp you know, starting new businesses, kind of reflects that as well. Now, Dame, watching interviews from your past interviews, you know, you everybody gets the sense of how much of a true hustler you are. Everybody knows your mind frame on how you look at things, especially one of your most publicized interviews. There was more so amongst the fact that it was, you know, especially with the word boss. You, you, you train your mind to work differently than a lot of other people. You have a completely different outlook from the word boss. Where did you get that from? I mean, I'm from Harlem, you know, and, you know, we came up at a time where we became men fairly early and we had to do business and we had to put up our own money and we had to collect our own money any way you could. So, you know, a boss was a person that put up their own money to me, but now a boss really means a person that puts up their own money but also completely takes care of their family. You know, so boss is like another word for a real man. You know what I'm saying? So as a man, I know I can't have another man telling me what to do unless, you know, he's my father and my father has passed. So that's not going to happen or unless it's a superior OG that has survived something that I want to survive or has something I want and that can get me to get to that place. But other than that, you know, unless you're putting up the money, you're not the boss. And that's just that's not I don't think that's a different perspective. That's the only perspective. I see a lot of people that manage other people's money and pretend that they're the boss. But that's a lot of overcompensation. I call them supervisors. But also, you know, having ownership is something that you can pass to your family. So if you're going to be, you know, working, you might as well work um, for something that you can give and pass down. And I think people in that interview didn't understand what I was saying. I wasn't saying it's, it's, you shouldn't have a job. I'm saying why you have a job instead of buying that car, buying those rims or spending that ex extra money at the bar or getting them Jordans, you might put want to put that into something that's going to come back to you. You might want to turn that into cash flow, you know, because that's what I do. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. Looking at the time, my bad, but uh, we still got about three minutes to go. Do you want to wait? You want to go one more question? Or you want to? Good, trust me. See, for me, it's still, it still feels surreal to have you in here because I look at you as one of America's greatest hustlers. You made a way out of Harlem to have your brand seen across worldwide what is that like seeing a worldwide brand that you develop now transcend into different countries into different generations into different ethnicities what does that mean to you well i mean i don't i don't know anything else you know what i mean so like from my perspective everything i do is normal to me even though it's not normal to everybody else because they don't do it what i think i did that no one else did is i completely walked away from the music business on my own terms so while we was rolling, I was like, I just decided not to go about it that way anymore and invest in myself. So that's what I think that people don't understand is different. The difference between me and everyone else is 
I don't feel appreciative of anything given to me. Actually, I don't like it. So when that started to happen, I broke out when a lot of people conveniently wouldn't have. Now, why did you, you know, leave when you was out on top? Because I mean, a lot of people could I say... I wasn't on top because I wasn't putting up the money. So that's what I mean. What I noticed in the quote-unquote business is they make you think you're on top, but you're not. Because you're not, and you, 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 there's no ownership. So if you don't own nothing, you're not on top. If you're working for somebody and, you know, standing next to someone, to someone that's famous or, un, or just only doing things for perception to me has always been corny. So I, I, I know a lot of people that act rich, that look rich, but they not. You know what I'm saying? When they come home, it's not what they're projecting. You know what I'm saying? And they cannot get, the, again, I'm going to keep saying it, their kids don't get none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was, I was talking to um, somebody at the airport and they were telling me how someone was rolling because they had a nice apartment. I'm like, how is that rolling? You have a one-bedroom apartment, but you got two kids. Where the kids sleeping? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, that's what I mean by people sometimes only hustle for themselves so they can pay their own bills. But a real man and a boss, they got to put their company first. They put their product first. They put their family first. So I'm going to sleep on the couch before I have a room. You know what I'm saying? But if I don't have a room for my children, then I'm not really doing what I'm supposed to do as a man. Facts, facts. You facts. understand what I'm saying? So I just think I'm trying – I bring awareness to what – from my survival skill set, like we had to survive, you know, I'm sitting next to someone I've known for 25, 30 years. And again, we were in the, in the 80s and it was, you know, you had to play the game completely correct to survive and you had to have honor. And if you signed on to a certain contract, there was no looking the other way as it was convenient. You know, you had to just get through it. And the only way to do that was honorably and to honestly care more about other people than yourself. So my fight is more for love. It ain't for money because, you know, I don't believe in money that much. I got to have it to spend it. But really, all I do is every time I get a dollar, I put it back into a business so that I can invest in something for my future. You know what I'm saying? And I'm more about quality of living and making sure my children are all right and make sure now, my woman is good. Now, when you got when you got the mindset of saying, OK, I want to get into the music industry now, what, what was your mindset going into it? What did you want to take out of the music industry when you I, got into it? I wasn't it? looking at it like that. I was looking at it like I wanted to stop selling drugs. You know what I'm saying? I was a teenager, so I was like, and I just was, I went to a party where I saw a lot of lames that were pretending they were doing it that worked in the industry, and I was like, they just seemed like Johnnies to me. So I felt like I could take that. But as soon as the minute I got there, I got out of that. I'm not in the music business at all. I make music, but that's not how I monetize it. You know, I got art galleries all around the world, and really what I've been focusing on is what creatively inspires me, and that's me being a director, and, you know, I launched Damon Dash Studios. So the real reason why Blue Rock came to fruition because Jay Black, AKA Black Gold really is inspired by the music and he's willing to fight for it. This army you see around you was, you know, it was curated by him. And these are people that he's worked with in North Carolina for years, for the last 22 years. And he has been telling me that this is untapped talent, but it's like, I don't have the, the I'm not inspired enough to fight for it. Like if you yeah. want to make money from music with me, you're going to make it later. Like I'll, I'll make it and put it up and then I'll put it in my movies and I'll license it. But the immediate book, I'm not going to be doing all that. But Jay Black, he, he has a sense of the people. And for the people, he's going to work hard. He don't want to do all that neither. But it's so much talent coming his way. It's really overwhelming. Like, we got the Money League. And uh, who's that girl? The 16-year-old? Cyan Lucas. Cyan Lucas. And then I met this girl up in the barn named Brianna. You know, on some singer-songwriter. And and then the, and Nicolette from Harlem. And, you know, all these things are coming together. And, again, I'll work with you. But you might not be happy about how fast I'm moving for you. But again, I don't move for people no more. I move for myself and my family. I'm more focused on being an artist. It's almost like I had to create the team to play for it. So, you, you know, like, I'm a conglomerate, man. Like, I got oil. I got Dash Motors. I just launched Dusko Blue Wine. I got Dusko Whiskey. I got Dash Damon Dash Studios. You know, all that's independently funded. And Blue Rock. You know, but Blue Rock is a division, and I think music is the glue because I love music. I just, the music business, it just is The industry real itself. That industry is not real. It's a cartoon. Trust me on that. And it's, what, it's what makes real. you say that it's a cartoon? I told you, nobody puts up their own money. Everybody's running around pretending they boss. You walk into a, 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 an executive's office, they're corny as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they get there, there temporarily because they only hire people that will allow themselves to be told what to do and to exploit our culture for another culture. So basically they only hire people that fit the mold that they want them that, to have. They, 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 they hire puppets. They hire people that will do what they're told. And usually people get sick of it and then go do what they got to do. Most people that work in the music industry are there for a check. They don't have any passion for what they do. And I know that personally. And my frustration used to come from people that didn't put up their own money talking to me like they did because they weren't equal to me because I put up my own money for Rockefeller. We did that ourselves. You understand what I'm saying? So it was like, 
people to understand we had a 50-50 partnership. We never worked for a label ever. But even still, the difference was that once we put up the money, the reason why we let them be our partners because they started to put up the money. But who's they? It's not one person that owns. It's a public company. So where's the boss at? And how is somebody that's not putting up money, money ever going to control my destiny or my family's future? I just wasn't for it. It didn't feel right. So it just took me, uh, I guess, some sort of, I don't know. I just can't compromise. I can't look the other way. It just didn't feel right. It's so, an unsatisfying, I just unsatisfying you know, I just, feeling. It's just that's like, you had deep down inside. It's just like if someone, if I had to, like if I drink, if someone has to tell me when to drink and how to drink, I'd rather not be drunk. You know what I'm saying? Especially when I know I'm cooler than everyone that's trying to tell me and pretend that they are cooler than me and tell me what to do. It just, I just couldn't do it. And then again, looking at someone that from my culture that appears to be strong, but they bow down to another culture for money. It's just, you know, it's, it's uninspiring. You know, I, I'm more of an artist than I really understood. You know, I became, I've really gotten more into my artistic side. So really what you're seeing is me directing movies you know, like too honorable and you could go order it and it's a direct and consumer relationship. Like you gotta remember, when I did everything, there was no internet. So now that there's an internet, I'm like, I don't even have to come outside. You like, don't even have to leave the bed no like, more. Instagram done saved my life. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have to deal with lames anymore. So I just started to focus on what I really love. And that is, you know, I love fashion. So I'm you have Poppington, I love art. So I opened up art galleries and I love directing and stories that, you know, have affected me. So you could go to Too Honorable um, d-studios.com and you can order the mixtape version but it's going to come out theatrical and you can go to Los Aires, d-studios.com and you can order Los Aires, and that's going to come out theatrical but I'm going to make it available to my consumer my direct demographic from me I'm not going to have you go through a middleman to get something that I could give you direct it just doesn't Directly, make sense. Directly, it don't make no sense to put someone sense. in between. And I think anyone that's telling you that you shouldn't do that is just pretending because the only real way to make money off an artist right now, if you're not the artist, is to rob them. You understand? It's these 360 deals that I'm not all right with. And the way they're trying to, you know, on the internet still, you got, you know, places like Complex that have artists that are on there and Vlad TV that will interview an artist, but this, the ad rev doesn't go to the artist. It just goes to the platform. The artist's still not getting it. It's just the same way it was with the music videos. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, putting out music somewhat is a commercial for all the ancillary things. It's just a lost leader. But you have to understand that. Also, nobody ever was teaching the artist besides me that you got to have a good show. Like right now, when I talk to the um, AR Wings and, and, the money, and, the, and the Money League, the, you know, Slouch Boys. Slouch Boys, every time I speak to them, I say, look, the only way you're going to make your money is to have a good live show. You know, you can't get but so much money in a club. You got to get to them festivals. And that's how rock and rollers keep that long paper. That's why, you know, uh, Rolling Stone, you know, Mick Jagger's 71. He's going to be in Charlotte, 72. He's going to be in Charlotte next week or something like that. Or, you know, a couple of weeks I saw advertisement. My next question would be, you know, when you came into the game, technology wasn't where it is now. Mm -hmm. And like you said, cutting out the middleman, you, you simply done that. You don't need to hire nobody to say, all right, push my stuff. Really, you could do it all by yourself, social media. 100%. Truth be told. Truth be told. You know what I mean? Do you see that as an advantage? Yeah. And what in what ways do you see it as an advantage? And what ways do you see it as a disadvantage? Well, no more nerds telling you what to do. You know, I don't see no disadvantage in doing it yourself. I never have. It's just that you have to be comfortable with putting up your own dough. And if that makes you uncomfortable, then so be it. But, you know, when you re-up, it don't make you broke. It just means you got to collect your money from the street. And you have to understand that as a boss... You know, it's your job to worry about other people. And as a professional, the only way to be a professional is to work harder than everybody. A professional, like a, a professional baseball player, a boxer, is someone that's better than everyone else. That's why he gets paid so much to do it. That means work. It ain't nothing professional going to get given to you. There's some sacrifice. There's always pain. And, you know, it's always going to be dark times because that's part of business. Every time you create a new business, you got to struggle a little bit. And it takes a while to build a brand. It takes about five years to be consistent. Like my first five years, you know, I'm not saying nothing different. I've been saying the same exact stuff. If you go look at um, 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 backstage and any kind of argument I had, it's always been consistent. It's just people weren't ready for it. They didn't trust it. But after I've been saying it for 10 years or five, you know, five to 10, now it's a brand. I have a brand for it. I'm consistent. I back it up. I'm still here. I'm still up. Even when, you know, being an independent meant looking like you was down. See, the thing about the music business, quote unquote, is when you up, they try to make you look down. And when you down, they try to make you look up. They make you feel rich when you broke, and they try to make everybody think you broke when you rich. It's funny. 
Now, my question is, you know, I, earlier you mentioned how you have a taste for art. You mentioned how you're into your arts. You also I have... got galleries around the world. You you have peers... I'm here to China. I went, I went all over the world looking for cool people. See, there's a millennial generation of young people that never had to deal with the prejudices of never seeing a black president. You know, that was unheard of to me when I was 15, 16. That, you know, 10. I was that, you know, we damn near was at the back of the bus. But... These days, there's none of that luggage. And people don't even know life without a computer or life without an internet or life without a Twitter. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Definitely. So there's no luggage. So this millennial generation, they know how to apply this direct-to-consumer thing without any fear. But if you got to break other people's, like the older people, my, my age, you know, that's a, a mentality that's hard to break because they don't know nothing different. Now, let's take it back right quick. When did you start deciding to produce films? Always. When I got into business, it wasn't just music. That was just the easiest thing to conquer. It was always to do films, but I'm not producing them. I'm directing them. I'm executive producing because I'm paying for them, but I've been doing that. You know, I support the arts and I give people platforms. You know what I'm saying? Like to me, a, a real person that is, is supposed to be a leader is supposed to serve the people. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to be worried about yourself. You know what I was, I, I've been thinking about lately? You notice that in the music business, traditionally, it's the businessman that's robbing the artist. And they always, the artist ends up with the with the behind the stories of where they are now. Of where they at now. Nobody All my really artists that I ever touch are rich. They doing well, and I'm the one that's always looking broke. Why? I, isn't that weird? It's because I give it all away. I, I'm not trying to take an artist and have him in my pocket for his life and jerk him and have him resent me. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to get him out of my pocket and be like, look, man, go win. Go eat. Go be yourself, but leave me alone. Now, speaking of looking for artists, you know what I mean? one of the most profound artists that you have come across, who would you say that is? That I've ever come across? Yes. The one artist I don't understand is Jay Electronica. I don't understand him because he could have took the chip and he was the heavyweight champ for that, for that moment and he just didn't take it. You know, he hasn't put out an album. So I'm really curious to see what he, you know what I mean? Like, What's coming up next? That's some real artistry right there. Like to, to not be caring about the fame and all that is something I'm not used to. Most artists just want to be famous quick, you know what I'm saying, to get that money. He just disappeared. He had it. You know, he was getting a thousand BDS with that record. I was listening to it before I came up, Exhibit A, without even working it at radio. You know, so that was always something that was uh, curious to me. I can't figure him up. So that's why that might be the most interesting artist to me. But the most talented, yeah, they're not discovered yet. You know, like there's this the London Souls is a rock group. This, this kid, he's black and he's from Harlem and he's the best guitar player I've ever seen. And he tours all day, and he's been doing this for the last five, six years, but no one knows who he is. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the goats be the ones that don't make it for some reason. I think he's going to get there, though. But those are the ones he plays a, a guitar. You know what I'm saying? See, artistry to me is, is you know, rapping, I'm not saying it's not that. Art. It's, it, it is art. You know, it's to like poetry. A certain, to a, it's poetry, a different, a different aspect. It's, it's just a different perspective. You know what I'm saying? I mean, rapping isn't the easiest thing in the world, but, like, Getting a band together and playing them at the same time and rehearsing and all of that, that's what I want to see. I want to see, it's easy to get into a studio and make a record. Everybody sounds good in a studio, but it's not that easy to sound good live. So the artists that sustain are the ones that have a good show and also the ones that give you visuals. So the Beatles made movies, Pink Floyd made movies, Elvis made movies. Those are the ones you kind of, you know what I mean? You that hear you a lot, look up to. You know, that, Michael Jackson. That they can't go nowhere. Michael Jackson made movies. Would you say Kanye is at that point right now? Yeah, Kanye, I mean... at. For right now, he's probably the one that's the most forward and has had a point of view. Like, his point of view has been strong. He has never really cared about what people think in the moment, and he does things different, which is why I signed him. You know what I mean? It was He wasn't the average. Like, it, it's funny to me that he became the biggest one, Paul. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember he wasn't the one. I don't consider him the best rapper. I would consider him the best producer that can rap. You know what I mean? So I put him in like a Dr. Dre category. See, but what did you see in him at that point in time that I you didn't wanna, saw him involve into this? I just didn't want to be doing hip hop so heavy no more because everyone's fighting each other and civil war happens too much. You know, I think it's stupid when friends fight friends and get tough with each other. And that's what continues to happen in hip hop. No one beefs with other people. They beef with their friends. And I just think it's stupid. And I don't be wanting to be around men all day. You know what I'm saying? So Kanye to me was a different perspective. It was it was him being a producer but him wanting to do more. You see, Rock, Kanye's really bigger in fashion now than music. You True. know, he, that's what he's Facts. done. And he's done some groundbreaking things. So I'm proud of what he's done as an individual. You understand what I'm saying? But, you know, when we talk these days, I always talk to him about my perspective on music and what I consider dope. What I consider fly and my wins are completely different than everybody else's. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm more or less always trying to impress me. I, I have a hard time impressing myself. I don't care what anybody thinks. Now, I never have. And neither does Kanye. And I like that about him. What you find in Rockefeller 
starting your own label up, mm-hmm. building it from the ground up, putting your own money into it, putting your time, your energy, your effort into it. Has there been another label that has came across your face that you was like, wow, I got a lot of respect for this label? Yeah, I, I respect anyone that's been sustainable. I, I respect Cash Money. I respect Master P. You know, I respect Russell Simmons. I, I wanted to be like Russell Simmons for a little while. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, you know, his perspective on things. And I definitely copied him with Rockwear when he did Fat Farm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, there's a lot of movements. You know, even Wu-Tang. These are, these are timeless rock and roll kind of movements to me that are still here 20 years later. You know what I'm saying? So I respect it. I like the ASAPs, too, how they're getting down because they're from Harlem. You know, and I like the way they don't mind being different and they like being fly. Like, I like ASAP Rocky's new album. I thought he went a different direction and it's still dope. You know so, what I mean? You know, and you got to understand, I, I knew all of them before. You know, they used to be in my gallery. So, like, Wiz Khalifa's and all these other dudes, They before Black and Yellow, he was, he was in Woodstock just making music. So, because of my kids and the people I have around me, this millennial generation, I always know what's about to crack. But my, my respect comes from sustainability and being consistent. Now, I also saw you gave an award to Kanye. What was that like for you? It's like giving him an award. I hadn't seen him in a while. You know, it was a lot of high yellow, you know, people in there. I wasn't expecting that crowd. They hadn't let me in that venue in a while. But, you know, I like the fact that he paid homage and, you know, let me or, or gave me the opportunity to be seen as the person that, you know, put him in that, that, in that position. That it is what it was. You yeah, know, he so gave- that was cool. But, you know, again, I, I'm not really big on that. You don't see me on too many war shows and, you know, I'm not doing it for accolades. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't do it for that. You know, if I, if I was trying to fit in, I, my opinions would be a lot less abrasive. And I would get a lot less aggravated with nerds. So, Dame, going back to the interview that was with the Breakfast Club, you know what I mean? You mentioned you was somewhat agitated from what? What, what made you ad- agitated from that interview? What, uh, uh, from with the Breakfast Club? Because when I told him I didn't want to talk about something, he kept pushing it. And I, just, I didn't feel like talking about the same thing over and over again. I had new things to promote. But everyone stuck on the old stuff. Actually... I didn't like the fact that's a gossip show, so I wasn't on there to gossip. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a chat, so I didn't want to get into that. You know, I'm not here for their entertainment on that level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, how did you team up with Jay Black, man? Like, where where did you guys meet? You taping? Yeah, we taping. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm listening to this shit. Um, like I said, he's you know we have this crew called The Best Out. It's like 25, 30 years deep, so we've known each other. And, you know, he has a legendary old head. His, his OG is a legend. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, you know, I come from a legendary circumstance as well. And we, under those circumstances, we survived like gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, through, like, Paid in Full was basically, you know, he was my, my consultant on that. You know, he was like a producer on that. You know what I mean? I got kicked out of Canada with him. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just, that's just how serious our relationship is as far as, you know, if you look under the, the hood, yeah. you know, our, our, we're A1 under there. Now, well, J Blush. Yes, sir. My bad, Dan. My bad. Nah, but, nah, what, what does it feel like when you have pioneers in the game such as Dame to support your movement and your decisions and things that you feel as those, right? What does that feel like to have Dame Man. with you, supporting, rocking with you? That's a blessing right there, Chewy. Because, you know, he, he done made so many legends legendary. And he know the game inside out. And the definitely. information that he passed off definitely, definitely steers you in the right direction. Now, what are some of the biggest things that you've taken away from working with Dan? Yeah, hard work. He don't never stop. He never stop, man. Keep keep fighting for what you believe in, and make sure that you have a passion for what you're doing. Because it comes sometimes it consumes you. you know now what I'm it can beat you down. Now, what was like as some of the biggest things that you've learned from him? What are some of the mistakes that you've seen that you won't do? K Black doesn't yell, man. Don't try to don't try to have him tell me my mistakes, man. Don't. I can tell you he doesn't yell. I do. When he does yell, you better clear out. Because I I seen him snap. Yeah, I snap every day. Snap, but he'll snap and be whoa, whoa, whoa. We gotta clear out the room. New York is in the building right now. You know, so. But what he'll tell you is I was exactly like that in the street as well. Yes, from day one. It wasn't nothing. You know, that's nothing new. But again. You know, my methods, someone have to work. It ain't too many coaches in this world that could get to the Super Bowl without yelling. You know what I'm saying? And I keep getting there. So, you know, it's just I, once I yell at somebody too much, we usually ruin the relationship. So that's what would be bittersweet about that. But that's the main thing I could say that he's better. His, he has a better uh, – his demeanor is way cooler. 
So basically, it, so- it sounds like y'all guys are like a perfect mesh because y'all yeah. balance. Well, we're friends. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the thing. I've known him for 30 years. It's not like I just met him and I'm yeah. hiring him. It's, you know, this is more like, you see, where I'm Family. from, if I'm up, all my friends is up. So also, every like not just him, everybody in the best out has had an opportunity to, to rock with me on any level. And they all worked at Rockefeller. I've taken them all around the world with me. So it was just like the way where we was, one win, we all win. So we're always supposed to pass each other. It's like if someone had a block and we wasn't cl- and you wasn't clicking, it'd be like, your block was clicking. Here, go ahead. As long as you ain't getting no, taking none of my money, it's, 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 it's all good. For you. Pass the rock. So that's what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? So we've just been gentlemen and stand-up guys, which is why we've survived. But that's, you know, again, it's, this is... The passion that he has for music is more than I do for the business of it, which is why I was like, this is perfect for you because I got records that are just sitting, that are fly. I got most deaf records. I got Black Keys records, RZA records. I got so many records I didn't put out just because I don't have the tolerance or the passion to deal with the, the bull crap. I make the art for me. You know, it's almost selfish now for me. It's not selfish for him with music. Like I only do what I want to do. And I only look out for who I want to look out for, whoever deserves it. Other than that, I'm not doing it. And you know what that sounds like? Sounds like a phone ring. Sounds like a boss. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate All right, it. You. We got we got to take these phone lines right quick. Coming from a culture where, you know what I mean, the up north, when you guys, when you was at the top of the forefront for music, when you was the one of the faces on route Mount Rushmore for music, and like you said, you used to have to punch people in the chest to fight to get your music played for everybody to listen to music that you was pushing, you know what I mean? Where did that passion come from? It's just me wanting to win, you know, and me not liking to be disrespected. That's another reason why I can't do music anymore because I got a temper. That's why I got three puppies, you know what I'm saying? Like, I walk around really usually with two, three dogs. I just came in from L.A., but I usually got a lot of emotional support around me, you know what I'm saying? So I kick off fast just because where I'm from, if someone punks you, you continue to get punked, you know what I'm saying, period, and you couldn't survive. So that's just my... In- insecurity and my instinct to be like don't try to play me because i feel like i'm gonna keep getting played so i just i don't know man i don't know anything but passion i don't know anything but winning you know and i always like to be fresh and have good things even i don't care about dough like that but i do want to have the things that make me happy so you gotta have that and most of the time when you're doing something new you know people are more or less bandwagon riders you know they don't want to do something different they want to just jump and do what everyone else is doing and i'm just not that guy so my passion came from number one I probably hadn't proved myself yet. Number two, I believed in what I was doing and the people that were around me. And number four, just coming from, like, you know, I went to boarding school. But every time I came home from boarding school, I always had to put my hands on somebody because I always would think someone thought I was soft because I went to boarding school. So I had that kind of chip on my shoulder because of the music business. Like, where I'm from back in those days, you know, the rapper was kind of the corny guy. You know, the rapper is always kind of rapping about the dude putting up the dough. The rapper usually wanted to be the, the dude that was hustling on the block. So it wasn't the coolest thing to be in music. And my friends, you know, like I said, the best out, they used to tease me every day. Like, don't get it twisted. Like, you know, we, we're all equal, so it wasn't like I couldn't get teased. I got to get teased because I tease. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. Harlem guys cut ass. Pause. I don't mean to. Pause. You know, we, look, look, I was waiting for you to say pause. I said it. You heard it. <laughs> you know? And uh, I didn't have a reason to say it as of yet, you know. But um, that's just how we are. You know what I'm saying? And even to this day, like, I just put on my Instagram, my friends from uh, Harlem were at a liquor store that we were placing the wine, and we had an impromptu tasting. I'm not there, but I know that if they didn't like it, they'd be like, ugh. Like, they would enjoy heating me up. But when you do well, they enjoy giving you love. You know, it works both ways. So that's just how Harlem Cats are. We want to be number one. It's like, if I'm going to play the game, why wouldn't I want to win? Why don't I want to be number one? You understand what I'm saying? I want the best girl, the best car, the best clothes, the best, 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 best. We are the best out. And that's what we were about, period. Still are. And my, my, my head is still up there in Mount Rushmore, you know. Lincoln I don't and, think it's ever going anywhere. Yeah, like Washington hasn't been around in 200 years. He's still there. You know what I'm saying? So once you make history, history stays. See, when you try to do too much after that's you make history. That's when you destroy it. That's when you destroy it. That's why I went and started to do rock and roll. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't know if y'all know the Black Keys are, but I went and did Black Rock. And you can go look at that, dot com, And, you know, I put the biggest rock and roll group with, um, the biggest, uh, you know, rap artist and came up with something that just didn't exist. And I didn't put it out major. I did it myself and we put it out ourselves and we made money. You know what I'm saying? And it was one of the more gratifying projects I ever did. I think that shit is bigger, excuse the cursing, but I think that's bigger than anything I've done. Just because it's, no one's done it. You know what I'm saying? Or me breaking the fashion brand. 
And you ain't what hip hop person you know put their own money up and broke a real fashion brand. I'm not talking about Rockwood fashion. I'm talking about cut and sew. You know, I wasn't in Macy's, so we in Macy's now, but we were in Bergdorf Goodman. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we made Bergdorf Goodman. That's a big deal to me. My passion comes from the W. I like the W and not BM. I'm talking about just winning, period. Now, has there ever been a time where you said, I wish I never got into this industry? Nah, I made way too much money to regret it. Because you get a lot of people, you get a lot of people who they say, you know what, I wish I didn't have the fame. I didn't, I wish I didn't have problems, man. Nobody, nobody, if somebody says that, they're retarded. You know, I know so many people that don't appreciate the fact that there is even a struggle because they have none. But, you know, I didn't come from a place where I had to fight to get what I want. So I fought for it and got it. And I get to do things that the average don't. So why would I be mad? We made so much dough. There's no way that I could be tight about my life on any level. That's corny. You know. What now I have that? a question though. That's like self-inflicting a problem on yourself. Now I have a question though. Who are five artists that you listen to on a regular right now? You five say? artists you have in rotation on your MP3 when you're working out, when you're doing whatever you do. Who are the five artists you listen to? You talking about current or new? Both. Give me five current and five. I mean, right now, I'm listening to, today I was listening to, on the plane, I was listening to Teddy Pendergrass. On the way over, we listened to Jay Electronica, Donna, Donna Summers. No, Diana Ross. Ross. We listened to Diana Ross. Uh, um, we Diana. listened to Purity Ring. I go a lot of different places with it. I like a lot of different kind of music. You know what I'm saying? So, I also, we was listening to Pretty Woman by, uh, what's his name? Uh, Roy Or Orbison on the way over. You know, I played uh, the Top Gun um, anthem from uh, that movie Top Gun. Like, I, I listen to a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, I'm 44 years old. So, you know, being interested in the perspective of a 15 to 25-year-old, you know, I would feel like the old man in the club. I can't really relate at this you point. You can't relate at no more. Not even, I, I couldn't. I'm 44. I could relate to 44. You know what I mean? But, you know, my, my, my palette for music is, is it's a lot. You know, like I said, I, I probably know more about white people music than white people. You know what I'm saying? Just because I like music. And that was my way of escaping when I was in the street. So I used to listen to things that weren't street like. Because the street was so because intense. you want to take your mind outside of that that mindset, yeah. that mindset where like everything what, is down, everything is doomed. You kind of took yourself out there. It's a war. Don't get it twisted. That was a war. That was a war, and you had to play the game right. And every day, and again, the people you had to watch the most were your friends. You, but there is no friends in this war. You know what I'm saying? Except Definitely. like, and that's why now I know who my friends are 25 years later. Because a lot of them that I thought were friends, they didn't take like you got to get past the 10 year test. It, t it takes, you know, a dude might not violate in the first, second, two, three, four years, but after the fifth or to the tenth, you know, things happen, man. You know what I'm saying? You won't expect it. But, you know, after like 20, you'd be like, nah, I'm good. Right, so my my friends that I, you know, you know, around me now are my friends that were my friends 20 years ago, the best out, my crew. I, I feel the safest around the people I've known the longest. You know what I mean? Because that's all we like to do is laugh. Like, you got to remember, we're the best out, so... You don't know, we threw parties at the Cotton Club, and, you know, we were more about laughter. We thought everybody was kind of silly. Oh, we knew God. killers. Yeah, we knew killers, but we laughed at them. Like, why y'all doing that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, let's get money bus and have fun. Rides. Yeah, we had bus rides. The T-shirts and all that, the marketing really came from the best out. And, you know, I really actually got my crew together and was like, yo, let's make records and, you know, let's do clothes. And a lot of people didn't think it was tangible. A lot of people didn't ride with it, you know, and I'm sure they regret it to this day. <laughs> but but that, I, I think that's like that. I think that's like that with with every business though. With every business, you gotta have the, the, your quote unquote friends that say, "Oh yeah, I support you. I rock with you until it's time." I want my friends to, to rock. To, I wanted us to be because with my crew, we all equal. Whether you got money now, you are gonna get it. In our mind, you know, you might not be up now. At some point, you are gonna be up, and you know it happens. It's part of the game. So we're always real cocky and arrogant. You know what I'm saying? So some of my friends stayed up, but poor some of them didn't. You know and. I tease them. Now let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about. Let's they talk too much when they was young, you know. I, I want to really talk about the gallery that you have in Albemarle. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about what it is, what it, what inspired it. Jay Black. Everything. What, everything. What, is, everything in South North Carolina is Jay Black. I wasn't coming here if it wasn't for him. But once I got here, what happened was they got me down here for a women empowerment um, seminar or something. Rally. And 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 then I. Spoken then I the and, and he was the, and they were yeah spoken from the nineteen thousand. And then I rode an hour away to to Albemarle, and I saw the gallery. He had the factory set up. You know he had some land, so I could do what I want on the farm tip. And then there was all these lakes. I didn't know there was water out here. You know I thought North Carolina was dry, so I could live on a lake. 
you know, and that's just to me, it's like being on vacation out here, you know. But everything that happened, and also the prices are a lot, a lot cheaper. cheaper. Like it's, it's a like lot twenty five cent on a dollar. Like I'm used to being in L A. and New York. So when I saw the prices, and then you know the the quality of living and the people that were here, and the opportunities, okay, like while talk. I'm editing my movies, because I just shot like five. So while I'm editing those, it was like, I'm not going to just sit dormant. And, you know, someone that I care about, my man Jay Black, had a movement that he believed in. So, see, the thing about me is if you show up, I'm showing up. And ain't nobody going to hustle me. So I was like, you show up, I show up with you. And I enjoy that. So, you know, he's actually just created a lot of different things for me to do and at a cheaper price. And I got, a, like, two warrants in New York. So, it, you know, it made sense for me to be in North Carolina. So I'm here. Now, what are the two warrants for? bubblegum stuff like child support you know it's a funny world that process you know i just gave uh uh rachel like 50 racks and i just gave my other baby mother 120 racks for a house and you know our they still they still go to no no listen so the business that i have i have all my because i don't hold no money every dollar goes into my business but there are businesses that i keep just for my kids so there's money for them Mm -hmm. and rachel roy was just that business but she was the manager. she is the manager of the company so she controls the checks so there's a court order that you're supposed to take the money, my profit in there, and pay my child support. And she just decided to spend it on herself. Uh, and I didn't know. So I'm still paying for stuff. I'm paying 30 racks for school and this, that, and the third. And come to find out, one dumbass lawyer, a goofball named Donnell Suarez, represents both of them. And he strategically played a game. And they're trying to leverage me. But I'm not going to be leveraged. And if I got to sit in jail and be a father, I will. But at the end of the day, I have a civil case behind this because of the business part of it for about $5 million. And it'll all clear up. You know, it's part of business. It's a due process. So I'm, I'm not sweating it. I just don't like that the kids got to be affected by it. But that's what the warrant's for. But, you know, the bottom line is the reason why I get spoken about it is because they speak about it. Like, I know what it was when I had to get custody of my son and how they portrayed me. What they say in the newspaper is garbage, you know. But I know what they're going to say. But now that they're so shitty, I can speak and be like, don't believe that because I'm not going to have my kids going to school and... Her, their peers are thinking that I'm some kind of deadbeat or their mo- peers, mothers and my peers, you know, I'm not going to be looking like somebody, some kind of crab for some strategic play to, to leverage me and extort me for money. So I think there should be some awareness about this due process of, you know, being able to see your child. Like you really could do everything right. And because of an accusation, you get a, 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 a order of protection. You can't see your kid for two two months until you get back in front of a judge. And it's crazy because and the I lawyer face- does that on purpose so they can get paid. It'd be the lawyers that do it. So I'm actually going to blow up a bunch of lawyers. And I got a book coming out while I'm blowing people up called Culture Vultures. And, you know, about the people I feel have robbed my culture. So that's Leor Cohen, who used to run Def Jam. He robbed Russell. I came right at his chest. I'm coming at Charlie Walk. He's still president of Republican, but he robbed me once with um, Alan Grumblatt, who does Koch Records. And everyone that's a middleman that's still robbing my culture, I'm going to say their names, and you'll know who they are. Just like if there's a child molester around, they need to wear a tag so everyone knows to stay away from them. That's what these culture vultures need to do. They need to wear a tag or get tagged. But I'm, I wrote a book on them. You know what I'm saying? I Period. love I love the term culture vultures. Yeah, it's a very it's real. You know, and, and I, it's not a white or black thing. It's someone that doesn't subscribe to the culture. You know, we're all one race. We're all human. But, you know, we all have different point of views. Hip-hop and, and, and that culture, it's a culture. It's white, black, it's everything. But there's some people that are not from it. They're black. Steve Stout, I called him out too, you know, and I had to give him a little smack one time, and he's the only person <laughs> I ever put my hands on, but he just was trying to rob me, you know what I'm saying, and disrespect me. But, you know, these are the kind of things I think people should be aware of. You know, so that they don't get robbed. No one, these guys don't tell you about your future. They don't tell you about how to invest for your children. They just tell you about how they can make you make as much money as you can right, right now, right then and there, so they could get a piece of it. And they don't care how they compromise your brand. And that was one of the things, you know, one of the reasons why I had to get separate myself from Rockefeller or that whole movement because it was compromising me as a person, as a brand. You know, I started to feel guilt about making people feel bad about not being able to afford what I got. You know, I I want to more or less teach people how to get what I got. You understand, as opposed to make them feel bad for it, where they go rob and steal for it, you know. And I got directly affected of the karmic repercussions of that by my family, my younger family members trying to live up to that expectation and ending up in jail and ending up doing things that, you know, aren't good, period, for the bigger picture, which is the culture. You know, it's a lot of responsibility to be, to have a platform and also to be conscious, you know. You you have to do the right thing. And it's not about man's law it's about god's law moral law morals principles you know, the time you think you know getting life on on earth is way worse than getting life 
when you die, <laughs> you go to hell. That's forever. You know what I'm saying? You know, on Earth, you go, yeah, purgatory. I mean, who wants that? So I always try to do right by humanity. What do you think was the most you ever spent on jewelry? Can I, can I just see a chain? I know I know y'all won't be taking the chains off, but I think I take you know what I mean? All time. I be leaving this shit around. Word, word, word. The rock in the yeah, building, bitch. Yeah, the rock in the building, little bitch. <laughs> right up. I got Dame Dash chain on. The rock in the building, bitch. Y'all, we ain't playing no games, Blue man. Blue rock. You know what I mean? Blue rock. I'm going I'm to... Hey, the rock, the rock in the building. Hey, Dame, can I get this chain like color blue? You know what that mean? chain so could, could be get a chain color blue, but not mine. I, I'm just saying, I, you know, I got, I gotta have me, I gotta have me something, man. You gotta you know? go buy it. <laughs> I oh that. shit, <laughs> shit, <laughs> shit. The way my, the, uh, what Kevin Hart say, the way my um, bank account set up, it takes about three whole years for it to go from the check. <laughs> I, put, I put, I put him on too. He's a lie. <laughs> Put him in that's his what, that's first what, movie. I put him in his first movie. I put I took Kevin Hart off the stage and put him in his first movie, Paper Soldiers. And that which is ultimately I, I can honestly tell you, which is one of my favorite movies, Thank especially you. that's the when, first movie I directed. And, and you're still getting royalty checks off of it. Absolutely. I see it on BET and they you, you, you see the curse girl. words. <laughs> you see the curse words in their mouth, but uh wouldn't work out. Yeah, I'm gonna do it part two. You gotta do a part two? Why wouldn't I? Yeah. I was waiting for yeah, Black Gold, but that definitely was. He wasn't paid in full, hard. too. Get up out of here. You ain't got no job. Yeah. Man. You failed your pit test. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Black, Jay Black, so, Jay Black, so, so in uh, Two Honorable. Jay Black's still almost been, I think he's been in every paid movie. In paid in full. Man, what, yeah, what, what, looking back, how many years ago was that now? Paid in full. I don't know, man. But what, wow. what, 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 was, what does that still mean to you? And what does that still mean I'm, to you, I mean, Jay Black? It means I'm fly. It's epic. That's right. It means that I was a part of something that's a classic. That's still that's no one's gonna ever forget, man. That's like pe in people top five. I mean, yeah, top three, top three, top three. Yeah, especially as, especially an African American male. You know what I mean? Please. You ask them name their top three movies. It's always Paid in Full, Love and Basketball, or Scarface. And Menace, you gotta get some Menace in there. Oh yeah, Menace. But yeah, you know it, that it, dumb, it, dumb three it, really are. Uh, I I just like the fact that I could say I made history in music and made history in movies and fashion. You know. But really did good things. I didn't just like show up. I produced that, man. And it was based on the actual experience that both of us, like the re like I got to use Rich Porter's real crew. This is he's Rich Porter. He held the casket. Like he, Rich taught him a lot of things. That, that was Rich's little man, but not little man. Like so. You know what I'm so like, what was that like was for the, you, Jay Black? You boy, seeing you was, seeing your boy Rich go through all of that, and now you're actually in his movie portraying his life for people. I wanted to make it as real as possible, man. I, I, I of course, the, of course. The paid in full cash, fifty thousand, because I was putting real people in and taking actors mm -hmm. out. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was Rich's real. This crew. really is a part of my you know? life, and I want somebody that can bring the true essence and make you feel it, opposed to this guy who's going in there talking about action cut. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I caught so, it. so did you ever have to just stop the whole set? Like, yo, this ain't how that went down. It got to yeah. be like this. It gotta that do was like that this. was his, when I wasn't when I wasn't on the set. He would call me and tell me what was wrong. Yeah. So he was wow. in charge he when I wasn't. He gave me that authority, man. He left me in Canada. He <laughs> said, you run the show. Do what you got to do. Contact me every night. Let me know how it's going. And Give me a rundown. Everything you know, straight. Everything all the executives, sure. call them. Let them know everything was going. I, I had to fire a couple of people on there. Yeah, a few people got fired. Especially uh, That's not wardrobe. New. Yeah, people get on a movie set. I, I tend to fire people quick. It's not new, right? There. But did, <laughs> did you guys ever expect that? The movie yeah, we knew in it. itself. We knew it. If it, yeah. did, if it didn't do that, we knew something was wrong. It was a lot of pressure making that movie. Yeah. Like, I got calls. I had to fight over that movie. You know, we got violent on that movie. A lot of you things happened. Chase the Weinsteins I had to chase the Weinsteins over. Yeah, I had to chase the Weinsteins around. I mean, I got, I got into corporate bullshit. I mean, corporate stuff and street stuff. Yeah. Got the top seven, not seven. I had to smack a couple faces off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hold, hold on right quick, okay? I had to go through. I had to go through getting, you know, go through getting sued, but I won that one. You yeah. know, a lot, a lot, you know. And and when we came into the community, we empowered, we employed everybody. You right. know, down everybody. So worked. when you when you was going into the communities, when we was going into movies. Harlem, yeah, people from Harlem worked. We had to, that was the way it's supposed to be. It's, like I said, it. These are the people that protected me. You know, before I made it. You know, I went through a very extreme circumstance, and I still to this day don't understand why people gave me the respect they gave me because I was little. Both of us, we were young, but we, you know, we 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 got a lot of respect. That that aggression, 
that that, that, that passion. He, he, it just was the, just just we authentic. were the funny. We were yeah. We were just like, it was authentic, man. They understood. It was that. They liked us. People like people liked us. Live that. People liked us. They liked us because of the way we carried, we conducted yeah. ourselves. We were in in a, in a time we acted a lot older than most. Like like a lot of, like the good word says a lot of the times when you run good business, good things happen. And if you have a good product and you treat it right, you continue to let it develop. It becomes organic. Mm-hmm. Everybody else has got to see that. So with you guys being that age and building what you was building at that age and seeing where it was going, it, was just, it, it, it just, spoke for itself. There's principles and there's rules in the game, and we just abided by them to the letter on a humane level. You understand what I'm saying? Like, respect is what protected. You know, he got he got into way more ill situations than me, but his respect is what really, and his honors what protected him, and my honors what protected me, but, he, you know, he got he was from 40, or 40 if it's, Forty if it's like Harlem in Harlem, like <laughs> it's like Brooklyn in Harlem. Forty if it was like Brooklyn in Harlem, you know, you, that's the block that notorious and still is, you know. Like he's probably the only person I personally was messing with from Forty. You know what I'm saying? Other than that. So Dane, before you get out of here, man, talk to the people one more time before you go. Everything you I got lined say, up and everything you got coming I out. I was pretty impressed. I like, got red cams up in here. You got Scarlets. You got is that a five D or seven D? All kind of, you got a gadgets. We got cameras and all that. Your media game is on point. You know, like I said, man, everybody, I think, if they're going to fight, make it for love. You know what I'm saying? It's always about the bigger picture. You know, put your family. And if you want to be a boss, you got to put your um, company before you put yourself. Your, your, your people have to get paid before you do. And it means struggling. And the more demand you have for a product, the less money you're going to have because you got to buy product. You understand what I'm saying? So it's part of the game. And just play the game fair. And you just can't look the other way. It's so easy to look the other way, you know, and that usually is the test. And every time, you know, you have the opportunity to move forward, a test comes, whether you're ready to move forward or go backwards and take the same test, but make it, it usually is harder. So it looks convenient and it makes your life harder. The things that look easier usually make your life harder and hard work makes your life easier. You understand what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, just stay tuned for the liquor, the, the motor oil. Come to Poppington University on Saturday. I'll drop some jewels all day. I don't stop. You know, I can talk all day. Um, look out for Blue Rock, you know, uh, Chasing Money. Money. And that's a hit record. Look out for the movie Chasing Money. They actually did two directed. movies. JT directed one in Atlanta. I directed one in... Uh, in uh, JT, the bigger figure. Bigger figure. Shout out to him. He's doing a lot for the community. Curtis oh, Snow and then also, the also out here, I'm noticing, yeah, I think we should be a little more conscious about this GMO food, which is why I want to grow my own food. You know what I mean? Because... That's the way they really kill us, you know, by putting stuff in our body. You could work, we could work out all day, but if you're putting terrible things, your organs can't survive. You're done. And I'm noticing there's a lot of sugar out here. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of butter and, uh, you know, a lot of acceptance of not being in shape, Paul. So I think, you know, we should start working out, you know, so we could sustain and make sure our kids work out. But, again, I think, you know, God gave us the ability uh, to grow, to build, and to take care of ourselves without having to completely worry about money. And we should focus more on the things that God gave us as men. And our focus should be on taking care of our women. They should never have to work. And all these guys that are going on dates and splitting the check, I don't consider that manly. And I would never let my daughter marry a man like that. A real man takes care of his family, his woman. They don't have to do anything. And then the woman kicks in. But, you know, a real man deserves a real woman. And a real woman deserves a real man. And we need to look more, look out more for our women. They shouldn't have to act like men. And, you know, men got to start raising their children. Because if a, a woman is the biggest influence in a man's life, then he's going to act like a woman. So a man should be the biggest influence in another man's life. You know what I mean? As far as his father or his uncle or whoever, you know, but men got to step up and start being men and lead by example. And I'm not knocking men. I'm just saying that's what I'm noticing. You know, a lot of dudes that are looking for mommies and that's a man baby. So no shout out to man babies and big shout out to men that look out for their children. You know what I mean? And that's it really. And Blue Rock, you know, Blue Rock is... Is the new rock. And watch out for, and watch out for rock. Damon Dash Studios. Yeah, watch me yeah. evolve as a director, me being creative. And go to Dee Dee Poppington and you can buy the clothes that I make down to the glasses. I made these glasses. I make everything, really. I'm saying, could I get some stuff, man? Yeah, you I'm, can try, I'm trying to be swagged up. Yeah, you got can be you, really Chewy. swagged Got you, no doubt. Got you. And then also look for G5, you know. G5 and and also, we're also, he's also taking orders. We're also not only telling you how to empower yourself, we'll help you. So if you have a logo... We and you want to make some T-shirts. Embroidery. We'll show you how to how much printing. it costs to make it, and then how much you should sell it for, and then show you how to build a website and sell it yourself. You know, but we're one stop shop. We're completely vertical. Pause, and uh, we'll show everyone else how to do that. And with the internet, there's no reason for a boss. But 
If you're making some money with your job, put some money to the side for your future. Forget the weed. Put the drink down, even though I sell it, the uh, drink. And uh, maybe put that into a business that's going to come back. And it's not going to come back quick. Yeah, it's not, oh, oh, yeah. not going to come back so fast. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be patient when you want to be a boss and when you want to have business. But it takes being exposed. But you'll get it back. You know, reing up is nothing. Period. Just collect that work without violence. Collect that money without violence. Streets 1033, you just heard it. Fresh out the man's mouth, Mr. Dame Dash, the hip-hop legend, not just hip-hop legend, business legend, the entrepreneur. You, you know what I mean? Dame, how many businesses do you actually own? <laughs> that That's what I want to know. Uh, man, man got do you even know? Well, no. But the ones I'm focused on is the liquor company, which is a company, the music company, the movie company. And also what I'm going to do is I have 25 movies I've already made and 25 albums, and I'm also going to have a subscription model. So I'm going to make my own Netflix where you could just order the movies I made for probably $10 a month, $50 to 100 a year, so that you can get that as well, streaming. I think that's the lick, that's the wave right now is to have your own. Like, giving your stuff to someone else, you ain't going to make no money. But if you have enough That's content, not what a boss does. If you have enough, yeah, if you have enough content and that someone will subscribe to it, then you can make money. Like, $50... A month and you appeal to a million people you just made 50 million dollars i mean i'm sorry 50 dollars a year you just made 50 dollars i mean 50 million dollars or if you get 500 thousand people you make 25 million or you get a hundred thousand people you get five million dollars like why not do it but you got to focus and do it yourself and don't look the other way man somebody doesn't play by the rules man they can't be touched you know a rat touch your plate you got to throw it away can't eat off that plate no more man mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Dame Dash in here dropping jewels. Jay Black is in here dropping jewels. Yes, it's going down this Saturday, this Saturday. Albemarle, tell them the address, Jay Black. 2023 West Main Street. Be there, 3 to 7. It's a lot of information. Hit him up on Twitter, Instagram, at? At, T, at uh, T2G underscore clothing. T2G underscore clothing. And if you can't find it, go to my social media page at I am Chewy Five. We appreciate Dame Dash, J Black in the studio. Man, y'all tell them what station y'all got it locked into, man. Streets, baby. 103.3.